Hi guys, Squirrel here, welcome back to another episode of Transport Fever. Oh my, I'm loving this game so much. Tremendous fun, tremendous. Right, you can see what's going on down here. Our little construction factory is kicking out the bricks. Uh, we've got materials on the um, Bish con mat and the C con mat. They're spitting them out at a rate of knots. Press the L key, it'll show the different lines where things are going. Uh, I think one of the things I want to do straight away is upgrade this. So we're going to click on upgrade, then you have to click on this and then that. It's the most unintuitive thing I've ever seen. But there you go, click apply. And uh, what that'll do is allow more vehicles to come in and out, which is important because we've got a few lines here. Also, I think I spotted something we could do. If you press the L key, uh, which brings up the lines, and you'll notice that the, the ones going to Bishop Auckland are going kind of around this way. And I thought to myself, hang on a minute, if we just connect that road there, that's going to take them in a lot quicker. So I'm going to do that straight away. Let's click on the road thing here. And uh, we'll go for a 80 kilometer speed road. And we'll connect that to here. It's quite expensive, isn't it? Good okay, 133. Bizarrely, if you move it around, look at it. It just gets... The, the price changes. 124 seems to be the cheapest. There you go. So if I press the L key now, hope, there you go. Hopefully that will reroute like it has done. So now the only one going this way is the one that goes back all the way to Seven Oaks, which uh, there's not much we can do about that. That's that's pretty quick as it is. So that should improve uh, the routing into Bishop Auckland. Let's get rid of this. Right, let's have a look at the passenger line, the train line. Uh, train's just left, has 29 passengers on board, and we've already got 10 waiting at the station. Uh, so this is improving massively in popularity. So I think what we'll do is we shall improve the line. Uh, we're probably going to need another one of these trains on this line. Uh, which means we're going to need some passing loops. Now passing loops are something I don't think I've shown you yet. Uh, I just want to double check the, the bus routing here. So I want to make sure we've got a good bus route going. Yes we have, we've got a cracking bus route going. Now one thing we could and should probably do is uh, double up on the bus route here. In other words... Uh, reverse the buses so that they go the other way. So what we can do is we can click on down here and uh, click on the bus tram and what we can just put a bus stop in exactly opposite where we've already got one like that and here. I should do it. Now if we go to our line manager uh, we now have, this is Seaford, so if we look down here, Seaford buses. So the first thing I'm going to do is rename this one uh, this goes from Seaford Transfer. This one's going anti-clockwise, if you look. So I'm going to name this AC now. Um, not for AC currents, but for anti-clockwise. C buses. And then we'll create a new line. Uh, we'll colour this one like a slightly a dark green. There we go. This one's going to go from here. And then we can look at this and figure out which way it has to go. Let me just double check I did that right. C buses goes from C Transfer to the green. That's green lane. That's the green. Yes, that was correct. So this one's going to go this way instead. One, two, three, four. Like that. And we'll call this one C Buses C for clockwise. Done. So the only thing we need to do now is put some buses on the line. Uh, can't remember how many buses we put on here. I can see one there and one there. So that's two buses. That's fine. Let's put two the other way. Uh, passenger, oh, what model did we put in? Okay, it looks like we went for these guys. Uh, the Saura. In fact, you can tell if you press L to bring up the line and then you hover over this, it says it's a Saura Tusher. You can see two of them on the line there. So we'll buy one, two of those. Uh, we'll set the line to be buses, C buses clockwise. Boom. And that should. Put them on the line there. Let's get rid of that. And that. Sea buses clockwise. Click on vehicles and colour them dark green. Press the delete key to get rid of all the windows. And that should push out two buses. Which will go that way. Cool. Now let's do this line first. 
So we're going to click on the... Have we got upgraded track or standard track, I wonder? I think we've got standard track. Uh, we're okay with one platform for now. Uh, we could have a passing loop before we come into the platform. So what we'll do is we'll create a branch like that. And along here. And then we'll bring it just back in. Hopefully just before that track. Too much curvature. Alright, it looks like that was too much for it. Try that again. What I want to do is join it back in before the junction. There we go. Wonderful. So that is one passing loop. And what we need to do is put a couple of signals on it. One here, like that. And one here, like that. And if we zoom out, you can see they're two-way. But we'll change them to one-way. Right, if we press the L key, now we can see basically what is going on. It's easy to explain once we do this. Uh, so what we've done is create a passing loop, which means a train that comes along here, if we've got two trains on this line, one that comes along here can come along the top side there and stop at that signal, wait to get into the platform. Meanwhile, the train that's here will be able to pull out and go to this passing loop here and stop at that signal. When they're in each of these sections, the trains will then be released and they'll be able to carry on. In other words, they pass each other at this loop here. That's why it's called a passing loop. So we're going to need some of these so that we can have more than one train running on the same line. Now this is a cheap way of upgrading the track. The problem is at the moment is our train here is not earning a tremendous amount of money. He's doing pretty well. You know, 500k profit a year is doing pretty well. We could double track the whole thing, but a cheap way of doing it is to just put in some passing loops. And while you've only got a couple of trains on a line like this, that's fine. If we tried to push on more, it would quickly reach a bottleneck. Uh, one passing loop can, can can work with two trains, but actually what we really want is to put some more passing loops in. Uh, so we'll have another one further down the line. We could have one down here before we come in to here. And the good thing is it, it's not wasted money because later on you can use these sections of track, these pieces here. You can use them when you uh, when you come to make it double track all the way because you've already got a partial double track on the go. So we'll make that into a one-way, make that into a one-way, and there you go. We've got one here and one here. So perhaps we would need one roughly in the middle just to make it optimum. Now all the track that you put down, that's not connected properly, all the track that you put down uh, has a running cost. So, because you may be thinking, well, you know, you've got the money, you've got uh, you've got 20 million, why don't you just double track the whole lot? Well, financially, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Because what you've then got is a lot of track that you're paying for, but your line usage is not very high. There's not that many trains on it. So you, you're renting, imagine, think of it as renting, you're paying for all this track here per month, but you're only actually pushing one or two trains down it. It's not worth it for the whole length. The more track you put down, the more it costs you. Another thing we can do is make this train longer. Um, he's got a bunch of people in there all winning. Sadly, there's no way to upgrade this without bringing them into the uh, depot. And the moment that you bring him into the depot is the moment that um, he throws away the passengers and comes into the depot. It's a bit of a pain, to be honest. Right, Bish C1 is what the, the line was. Bish C1 is... Uh, sorry, not Bish C1. It's the light green one, this thing. So we can see it's a class 75 with a couple of Donna Bush um, carriages. So we'll go for locos, we'll find the class 75, that's this guy. And we want Donna carriages, which are these guys here. That's got 17 passengers, this one's got 20. Uh, the difference is the higher top speed. It also has a higher running cost, but since we're not going to be anywhere near this speed limit yet, because this locomotive uh, can only do 90, we're not worried about that. So we'll get one, two, three, four of those. And we'll immediately assign him onto the train line. And off he'll go. Now the final thing we want to do is click on vehicles and assign the bright green colour. And you'll see immediately that will colour code him. That is actually really nasty. So I'm going to change the line colour to something a bit more natural. Let's maybe go for, there you go, that colour there. That's better. Okay, so he has gone to this stop here, which is fine. What we'll do is we need to get this guy to come back in. Unfortunately, he's going to bring up a whole lot of passengers in a minute. 
But effectively what we need to do is bring him into the depot and then bring him into the depot and then add another couple of wagons on the back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to time this so that when he gets into the platform, I'm going to immediately click on go to depot. He'll then sell his passengers and turn around and, and go straight for the depot before he picks these guys up. Because if he picks these guys up, uh, we're going to get zero income. Whereas if we time it well, then maybe another train can come along and get them. So once we see the money float over his head, we're going to click go to depot. There we go. So go to depot, but it's left all the passengers on the platform. If we clicked it when he'd already left, he'd have a whole lot of passengers, he'd throw them all away, and we'd get no income for it. And that's a pause for a save right there. So what we can do is get ready with the, the wagons here. Um, these guys. We know we're going to need two of those. One, two, like that. Uh, let's, ha let's watch the passing loop in action. Maybe we can see that actually happening. Which should be kind of cool. Uh, we've got a train here and a train here. Yeah, we should see this work now. So you can see when we click on the line key, you can see the line. So what's going to happen is he's going to go down that side. And this guy's going to go up this side. If they time it perfectly, neither of them will need to stop. If one gets there before the other, then they'll have to wait at the signal. Without this, it would be impossible for two trains to run on this line. Okay, he's going downhill, so he's going a bit quicker than this guy. How many uh, passengers has he got? 13 out of 68. So he's got a high capacity now. So once he's got past this signal here, there you go. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Look at that. <laughs> it's so cool to see it in action. We could put another train on that, no problem. No problem. We could put another two on it, and it would be fine. Right, we'll get this train in here, and then we're going to go and sort out the construction materials, because what I want to do is think about future expansion uh, to get more demand. And also the log situation, the logs and planks need moving around the tools. We need to go and sort that out as well. So we've got a few bits and pieces to do here. Let's uh, speed up time, get him in. Right, there you go. So immediately we we'll just bring that up like that, click on the up arrow, we'll set him back to go out. Now what you'll notice is when the trains come out, the wagons come out, the new ones that we bought won't be the right colour. It's just one of those annoying things that happens. Watch. So we've got our first two, which are green, and then the next two are default colour. So unfortunately, you have to go back into vehicles and then reassign the colour like that, and that will recolor everything on the line again. Okay, we'll leave those guys to it. Let's go and have a quick look at uh, what's going on at the factory here. Uh, production 36, we have a limit of 50... Uh, requirement 1 with a potential of 88. Uh, so what's going to happen right now, and this is something that's quite key. These guys need planks to do their job, okay? Th this factory takes in planks or steel and produces tools. Currently, it has hardly any planks, but it has a massive potential. That's important. It means, quite literally, we need to deliver more planks. Now... We only have one train on this line. The planks come from here. You can see the production is at half capacity. We need more trains on this line. It's, it's that simple. Because we need we have a demand for tools. There's no point in us creating more tool lines out of here because this thing just can't make them. And it can't make them because we can't get the wood there. So, first step is, you guessed it, create a passing loop. We're not going to create it on that bit because it'll be expensive, but we will create it on this bit here. Now, because this is a freight line, you just need to be careful and make sure that you make these passing loops long enough. Uh, because if you don't, you'll end up with problems later. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You'll end up with problems later because if your if your train cannot fit in that section, if the back end sticks out there, you'll have a deadlock because nothing can pass over that passing loop. And freight trains do tend to be longer. I know this guy isn't longer. He's actually quite short. Um, what we need to do is add more on the back of this guy straight away. The good thing is, um, he's currently got nothing in him, so we're going to turn to go to depot and we'll add some more wagons on the back. We're going to need a passing loop here. We might need another one down there, and then we'll probably need another one here. 
Uh, you can see the amount of logs that we have available is astonishingly high. And we need to move more logs out of here. We're going to need probably at least three trains on this line. So we'll go into here first and we'll reconfigure this. Now the wagons on the back are going to be these guys, the state cars. I'm going to double what he's got. So there you go. He's got three, four... Actually, we need to be careful of the platform length. Five. That's a 110 meter platform length. Uh, let me just quickly click on upgrade. That's 160 meter platform length, so that's fine. So, we'll buy one more. 124 meters, no problem at all. Uh, and while we're here, we're going to duplicate the train once, because that costs an absolute fortune. And then we're going to put him back on that line. Now our money is down to 5 million now. These trains are very, very, very expensive. And we've just put two of them on the track. And we don't have enough passing loops yet for it all to cope properly. So we need to very quickly get building so that everything can get a move on and not get blocked. Okay, we won't put the signal down just yet because if we do, you'll get very, very confused. There we go. Because the second train wants to come out. And now we can. Now, we know that he's just gone off in the wrong direction because without logs, he can't do anything. So we're going to turn him around. Which, you know, is a bit of a game feature, to be honest. Same with this guy. He should have gone here because the starting point of this line is logs. Uh, we can't turn him around, though, because he's on a one-way trap. So what we'll do is we'll wait till he gets out here and then we'll turn him around and speed that up. So he's almost out of there, and then we'll 180 YOLO. Boom. That takes care of that. Let's think about the passing loops. We've got one there, one there. We need one down here. So here on this flat bit should work nicely. But that's the other thing. I mean, I've only got like 5 million now. If I'd have double-tracked everything, I'd have had even less money. So this is a money-saving thing, not just on the purchase, but also uh, on the running costs. Right. Let's see where we're at. He should be pretty full. Yeah, 65. He's completely full. Wait, why have I got a passenger car on the back? <laughs> oh my god, did I just misclick that. What did I do? How did I do that? I think it's one... Oh, my life. One, two, three, four, five, and a... And a <laughs> passenger car. What an absolute scorcher of a fail. Let me just turn him into depot. Ooh, new vehicles. A goods wagon, an MAN, a hovercraft, and a class 103. Nice. There is a mod that you can get now for this game that um, causes the passenger, passage of time to go at one quarter speed. It's actually a really useful mod, I think. Because I kind of feel like this game goes too quickly. Uh, one of those. We've got it right this time. He's probably going to do the same trick and go the wrong way. Now, when the other train comes back, we're going to have to um, get him to do the same trick. That was just basically a, what they call a pebcac. Problem exists between keyboard and computer. Uh, in other words, me. Right, turn around, pal. He's now set up. Yeah, the length of this line, I, you know, we really need another train on this line. It's so big. Cool. Look at all the logs they have now. So if you click on this, they've now got 62 logs, and they're going to get to work on that. And production has come right down because we, we didn't bring anything in for a long time, but that should pick up now. How much stuff did he have on him? Okay, he's got 28 planks. That'll keep things moving. You give it like a few years of game time, like one or two years of game time, and this line will be running at maximum again, and we'll stick another train on it once we get the profit coming in. The important thing for now is to make sure that this factory keeps going, because right now it's doing absolutely nothing because it has no planks at all. And yet it has quite a, um, quite a demand for stuff. 
All right, while that line's getting going, uh, actually, we've got one more thing to fix, haven't we? We've got to get this guy. Yep. We'll fix this guy up, and then we'll go and look at the other stuff, like the delivery, the tools and stuff. Let's buy a wagon. We'll buy a state car. There we go. I think what happened is, remember when I came back in and I clicked buy, it must have defaulted to this. And that's what happened. So we'll sell that, bring that in, put him back on the line. Okay, now hopefully production here will start to pick up. It's already doubled, you can see the limit there, it's doubled. It starts off as a default 100 usually. What if you try and spin him around does he flip over? Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> if you 180 him, it completely breaks the rules of the um, of the one-way system. Hmm. Never knew that. Right, in terms of tools, let's have a look at the lines we've got. Now, if you press the L key to bring up the lines, there's one useful thing. You can click on visible only. And what that'll do is it'll, it'll shorten this list down just to the things that you can visibly see. So if we focus on that one, it only shows that line there. If we bring it back here, it'll show this line and this line. So that can be kind of useful when you're just trying to find a line. Uh, we can see that we've got one tools line, which is to uh, here, to Seaford, and nothing else. Now, if we, wanna, if we want this log line here to become really, really profitable, uh, what we need to do is make sure the demand is always there. The demand is always here out of this factory. Because if this demand is here, then this will grow and this will grow, as long as we can move things around. And I'm confident we can, uh, because that line, we can easily stick trains on that line. But the problem comes from here. If we can't keep the demand up, these guys won't produce. It's all about demand in this game. Create the demand and everything else will flow. So we're only taking tools to Seaford, and we should be taking tools somewhere else. The nearest place is Bishop Auckland. The next nearest place is Swanage. Swanage is quite a distance away, uh, so I'm not going to focus on that. So what we need to do is think about how can we get tools over to Bishop Auckland quickly. In theory, we could run another train on here and get it down the... Trains are pretty expensive, and the money situation right now... Look at that, the class 218. The money situation right now, we just couldn't afford it, quite frankly. We couldn't even afford the loco and the carriages, so we need to do it with trucks. Trucks is the way here. If we just look at the design of this and think about it, so that the trucks are going to come out of here, they're going to have to fight the way through town, and then they're going to have to get down there. How about we try and link up to this road here? How about we try and link a road through there? How much is that going to cost, I wonder? Oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. We've also got a Conmat thing going on here as well. I forgot about this. I forgot we had another one going on. That's using stone this time, but it's still construction materials, isn't it? Yeah, so they're bringing... Um, no, wait a minute, it's tools, it's construction... No, no, ignore that. I'm playing so many save games of this game, I'm getting myself all confused. This is bringing tools in, this is bringing construction materials in. So, in actual fact, a road from here into here would probably benefit these guys as well. Let's just have a look at their destination. Their destination is here. So what we could do is if we're really canny with this, if we if we have a road that goes out across the train line there and goes to there, then there's a direct routing. So if we build a um, <clears throat> an 80 kilometer hour road along here and can cross over that, we can click on this and we can bridge it up. Need to be careful we don't get too expensive here. There we go. Just lower that down. So the optimum is about here. Let's try and get it oriented the right way. Like that. We can build it out of steel or concrete. Uh, steel bridge. Let's go steel. And then we'll level it out like this. And then we'll bring it down. 
<coughs> to be honest, I think that was a mistake because um, those posts are now sat exactly where I want to be later on. So that was a mistake. We need en What I'm trying to get at is we need enough gap for a train line to go down there, a second train line. And it doesn't look like it's going to be possible. That would actually leave a bigger gap. Funnily enough. So let's go with that. It's quite expensive. We need to get this on the ground as quickly as possible. Problem is, is the land has fallen away quickly as well. Go, we're gonna go in that direction. Okay, so now we've got a partial bridge here. Uh, I guess we can just get rid of that and reconnect it. If we can actually convince this thing to connect. There we go. All right. Oh man, look at that. And still it won't go through, I don't think. Right, we'll have to move this track later. We'll move it later, it's fine. Let's ignore that. Right, we'll get down to ground level. So this is actually quite an expensive piece of road to build. But... The feeling is that it's going to improve all material transportation along this line. Let me just quickly click on this to upgrade. And if we can... I'd like to upgrade that road, but there's a terrain al alignment conflict with that factory. So what you have to do in this particular case is you'll have to not upgrade it. You'll have to destroy the road and fix it. So if we let that vehicle get off the road there, pause it. And then we'll just destroy these two pieces of road. And we'll come in with the fast one. Like that. And then unpause it. That's the only way to sort that out. You, you can't do anything about it. If, the, if that factory's in the way, tough. So that's now got a fast road there. Um, if we click on road and then upgrade, you can see if it's green, we've already got that kind of road. So that's the fast road all the way down to here. Perhaps that section would benefit as well. And let's just make sure that's fast all the way down here. Yes, it is. Nice. Okay, so the final step is to connect around this thing. Just so that they can take a slightly quicker route if they want to. Bit of a bypass route. Of course, by doing this, it does mean that if I want to expand this passenger station later, I'm going to have problems. So let's reconsider that option we perhaps go this way instead okay right then that looks good um, now we can get some vehicles on the line so these guys are producing tools uh, the tools are currently going to uh, Seaford is the only destination we've got right now. If we have a look at the Seaford line, which has got the materials on it, Seaford Com Materials Eco, we've got a, a whole mixture of trucks going on here. Uh, we're producing a 1 million profit. Uh, so that's actually the other line. But what I've just spotted here, can you see two different kinds of truck? There's the Opal Blitz and the MAN. So if we click on this, click on Replacement, and then go Set Vehicle, and say MAN, like that and then put yes for upgrade it will automatically upgrade the vehicles to the new ones uh, when they've reached 100% of their life but if you put it on 25% that will make them renew 25% of the way through their life cycle which is actually means that they should start to upgrade pretty quickly it'll send them to, it'll just literally instantly upgrade them automatically 
So that's a nice feature. You just need to remember to put this back on 100%. Right, this is the line we want, the blue one. The tools line has two vehicles on it. Let's have a look at what production's like at the moment. Uh, there's only a couple of tools on the line. I would expect that to change later, but I think two vehicles is probably okay for now. Now, tools, if you remember, when you click on the city, tools go into uh, the shopping facility area, the blue one. So if we click that, we can see that where they're going to, where they're actually going to is this depot here, which has a catchment which involves the blue. If we was to want to take tools down to Bishop Auckland, and this is where it gets really important, to go to Bishop Auckland, we've only got one depot there. Oh, we've got two, actually. We've got one which catches this industry. Uh, that's a passenger thing. What we don't have is anything that catches the blue. So if you want to ship anything in, like uh, tools, food, or goods, we need to hit this blue area, and we can't. If you look at it, we just can't at the moment. So we're going to need uh, another depot, which is one of these guys, another truck station, as it's called. And if we were to step it in there, you can see the highlighted area tells you what it hits. It hits quite a bit of the blue, not all of it, but a fair chunk. Uh, the question is, does that hit more or not? And if we was to connect in here, uh, you could see we'd cover most of it. The downside of this is that um, obviously you're going to have to destroy, you're going to have to destroy buildings to put it like over here. But I'm just looking at the coverage areas to see whether it's worth doing that or not. This city is going to expand. That's what you have to remember, and. It's going to expand, and if you get in there early enough, then you'll get a good catchment, and it will build around you for later. Now, I may build a bigger one now, because later on upgrading, it's going to be a pain. That hits about half of that commerce, which is not ideal. I would like to hit more than that, really. You can see that one there would hit an awful lot, but if, if it expands, it's probably going to expand green and yellow over here, the blue will probably go that way. So on balance, I think we should probably put it over here. So we'll go in and we'll put it... If you shift M and N, it will spin them round. There you go. That's probably the best place to put it. For commerce. So this depot is for industry. So I'm going to name this uh, Bishop Auckland um, Industry. And then this one will have as... Bishop Auckland Commerce, like that. That lets us later, when we've forgotten all of this, it lets us very quickly identify. Uh, so line, new line, and then we're going to go from here to here, like that. And this is going to be another tool run. So this is going to be not seaward tools, it's going to be Bish. It's going to be Bish tools, isn't it? Wood tools. No, it's not wood tools. It's sea tools. Yeah. So this is going to be bish tools. Bish tools. Like that. Don't like that colour. We'll stick with a kind of bluish colour. We'll go with a dark blue. Now all we need is some vehicles on the road. This, I'm probably going to upgrade now. Just to make it big enough to cope with all the vehicles. And the nearest depot, I think, is down there. Which is a bit far away. So I'm going to put a road depot up here. Just for convenience. Buy road vehicles, uh, click on the MAN. I reckon four, at least four to go there. One, two, three, four. And we're going to go set line and we're going to go for uh, Bish Tools, which is there. And in actual fact, if you look, it's still going to go through the city centre, which is a bit of a pain because I kind of hope that all of our upgrading would have um, sorted that one. The only thing you need to watch is which way they go first. They go into the depot first, which is good. Sometimes they tend to go off that way. So Bish Tools, Vehicles, we'll create them as dark blue. Replacement at the moment would be the MAN. We'll leave it on 100% and yes. Uh, the Wood Tools, that's fine. That one. Sea Tools, same thing. Just so that later um, it will automatically replace them. Let's have a look at the... Don't forget to turn off that visible only as well if you want to see everything. 
Now, if we look at the automatic upgrading we did, was it on that one? No, it wasn't on that one. We need to do that one, though. We'll put that on yes, 25%. I think it was this one. Yeah, you see how they've all been upgraded? We'll put it back on 100% now. Otherwise, it will quite literally replace them every time they get through 25% of their life. That will now replace these guys as well. And there's also that one to do. So we've got a lot of... Um, a lot of capital expenditure is about to happen as these things get replaced. So you'll see on the balance sheet, if you click on this, uh, it will show you your new vehicles. You can see we've spent serious money on new vehicles. So what I'm going to do now is just speed up time a little bit, and we need to get this thing moving along. What generally tends to happen is you lose money before you start to pick up the money. All that investment um, won't get you any return initially, but once it starts to pick up, it will. You can see this is on 200 and our production, I think last time we looked, it was on about 50 production. Now it's on 140 and in comes the train. Uh, there's not a lot left here, but with the service that's going on, oh, that's because the train just left, look. Yeah, a train just left and it was completely full. So these trains should start to make some good money shortly. If you look at the finances at the moment, yeah, look. So break even, then we reconfigured, lost a lot of money, back to break even. I reckon this year, 1972, it will pick up a lot of money. Like I, said, I was mentioning earlier, there is a mod which slows down the game time. Uh, the moment it passes, like, you pass a day every, look at it, on normal speed, I think you pass a day every five or six seconds or something crazy. Not even that. Uh, on a quarter speed, it is actually more of an enjoyable game. Obviously, you don't get to the Concord and stuff quicker, but you do have a much more enjoyable time of it. That one's in the workshop. And it's called something like Quarter Speed. It's a very, very uh, good mod. Suggest you check that one out. Planks down here are 52, so they're going to get moved over to uh, here, which point the tools will get made. And hopefully that will pick up quite a lot. Uh, the potential should start... The storage should start to pick up. That'll start churning out things. The basic way that you need to work this is you want to have... What's stored here should be just about hitting zero at the point where it's resupplied. You don't want to have a glut of stuff, but you don't want to ever hit zero on this. If you hit zero on this, it means you're not producing goods. This factory is dead. It's not producing anything if it doesn't have the materials. This has now established two lines, one to Seaford and one to Bish. So we've now got two demands going. As the demand picks up, so will the demand here, and that will feed back through the supply chain. Quickly before we go, let's double check how the, uh, the passenger line's doing. 15 passengers. Uh, would have liked to have seen more on that one, but that one's got 30. Um, the main thing is press the L key. Actually, I'll tell you what you can do. If you press on this here, so you press that and then the show or hide list of lines. If you bring this up, you can sort income like that. And you can see what profit your lines are making. You can see that our biggest profit right now is the Conmat line. The Seaford Conmat line is producing 1 million profit. Uh, this line here is the um, the Bish train line is actually losing 19,000 at the moment. But it'll improve. You know, this city is going to start growing for two reasons. One, we're moving people around, and two, we're supplying it with goods that it needs. If you click on the city there, uh, you can see that the tools are starting to arrive, and the construction materials are already in good supply. So the jobs are being made. Now we're going to get the shopping facilities up, and the net effect is that the population will increase. When that increases, they'll start using these lines because they'll move between these places. So things are going to go in the right direction. The only last thing I probably want to do is look at this train, this bus line here. It's horrendous. I actually don't know what I was thinking. So I'm going to quickly fix that. We'll put some more bus stops down. Uh, we'll put one opposite there, so we'll double them up for a start. That is a stupid bus stop right there. This one, waste of time. The reason is, is because if I put a, lot, a stop down here, you'll see what happens. You see the highlighted area? If I was to put a stop here, it's almost identical to one here. So we want to space these things out. I'm going to put one there and one here because this area is growing massively. And equally, I want to put one here and one here. And then I'm going to reconfigure this line. Because, quite frankly, it's crazy. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the way this is going. This is going anti-clockwise, so I'm going to rename it to AC. This is based on, like, new stuff I've learned as I've played the game a lot more. 
so it comes out of uh, Albert Road. Where's Albert Road? There. Stop one. It then goes to Queensway. Uh, and then it needs to go after Queensway. Can click on Queensway, then click on Add Station. Or we'll send it there. And then it needs to come to here. And then Green Lane is a waste of time. So I'm going to remove Green Lane. So that can come out of the equation. There. That's a much better circuit. Much better circuit. What we'll do is we'll get rid of that bus stop completely. Now, we need to create the opposite. So, new line. We'll keep it with like a yellow color. Go for a dark yellow. This one will be uh, Bish Buses Clockwise. And this time it's going to go here and it's going to go that way. Like that. That's all there is to it. There's two buses on that line, so we're going to create another couple of buses. Let's go to this. So, buy road vehicles, uh, passengers, one, two, and then we'll set them. Set line onto the clockwise route. And then the only thing to do after that is change the color. You can do it when you create the line. You can assign the color before you buy the vehicles. Um, but I always forget. I always forget. So I have to do it afterwards. Cool. Things are looking good, I think. Train's on his way. He's got 23 passengers on board. And we've got 6 million in the bank. Hopefully, the profit is going to start coming in. It's just a matter of waiting now. We've just invested a lot of money. We've just got to wait for that return. This goods train here, look, he's full of tools. Full of logs, sorry. And this thing should be starting to crank out the tools. But we'll have to leave it there. That's the end for this video, guys. Hope you like that one. Until the next one, take care. Happy transporting.